continue today with training of the matters of the kingdom we thank you for tuning in we believe god has blessed a lord yesterday in this morning we thank god that he's still raising up the standard what we have seen and heard yesterday it was nothing jesus says we are doing what we see and hear in your father's presence you are part of it i believe today god will raise your standard as well thank you for tuning in thank you now jesus is in our midst i declare blessed in jesus name bless you just welcome your neighbor tell your neighbor god is with you did you enjoy this morning? 
and yesterday. Hallelujah. So I'm saying today still God raises the standard. These are matters of the kingdom. Listen, I'm saying you are no longer alive, you are dead. You are dead. Once you lose your lower life, you gain higher life. And you can only operate, you know, according to what you see in the spirit. If you are seated with Christ, listen, the first thing that you did, you set your mind on things that are from above where Christ is seated. So you can't meditate about anything on earth except what you see and hear in the Father's presence. So what you meditate upon, it becomes a reality in your life. I'm telling you, wherever you go, just look at what is happening. The manifestation will be what you see and hear from above. Amen. Do we love Jesus Christ? So without any waste of time, I would like us to give quickly and we go on. We can't wait to deliver the message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is somebody ready to give? Is somebody excited to give? This is not God. But God is from above. So the glory that we have attract every material. Now, what do we mean? It's Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings. A true blessing is spiritual blessing. You cannot have material blessing without spiritual blessing. So if a spiritual blessing is upon you, it attracts all material blessings. Are we clear? That's why... It said, seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness. Now, all these things taken together shall be added unto you. So, spiritual blessings are important. So, what do I mean when I say spiritual blessings? It says God is blessed. And through Jesus Christ, he blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So, God is all and he's blessed. So, his blessings, all of his blessings are transferred through Jesus Christ to us. So, blessed be the God, he's blessed and it, through Jesus Christ, he blessed us with all. That's why Ephesians 1 says he is all in all. So how about carrying God who is all in all? So if you carry such, no matter what is happening, you remember Jesus when they tested him uh, whether he pays tax. They asked him, do you pay tax? Doesn't mean he doesn't have money. That moment, there was no money in his pocket, nothing. Peter Go to the mouth of a fish. If you are blessed with spiritual blessing, you get it? Spiritual blessing can attract, you know where money is. Can you imagine Peter going to the sea and the fish just come? Huh? And you take out money. It's a spiritual blessing that causes that. Are we clear? That's why this man of God is no longer, he went to the glory, he left. But now, you would just say, angels, I want this car. I want this car. And the car already belongs to someone. It's in the, you know, it's in the, at the car dealer. It already belongs to someone. The doctor already, he bought the car. It came after six months. You know, you wait for six months to get the car. But it's there. They tell him, the same person say, this car belongs to a doctor. If you want it, you have to wait for six months. He touches the car and said, uh, angels, go. Just locate the person and I want this car. The man's mind changes. You know angels can change your mind. He changes, he phones the car dealer and he says, I don't want this car anymore. No, I, I can't, I don't want this car anymore. Now the salesperson comes and says, hey, do you have money? The person just phoned now, now, that he doesn't want this car anymore. You get it? He doesn't have money. Angels, make a plan, make a plan. Somebody phones from Cape Town, man of God, I want to buy you a car. He says, ah, I'm at the car dealer now. I'm looking at the car. Yes, I want to buy a car. I'm at the, which car? And this is the amount. And, and, and it's MG worth millions. And then he says, I want this. The man just transfers money paid. He took the car he left. When he leaves, the angel cannot leave you schizophrenic forever. So they fix your mind. They take it back where it belongs. After taking the mind back where it belongs, the doctor phones, no, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened with my mind. I need that car. I said, no, somebody just bought it. I said, oh, please give me, give me his numbers. I want that car. I really, I can't wait six months. They gave me his numbers and he called the man of God. He calls the man of God and said, man of God, please, I don't know what happened with my mind. I don't know how I canceled. So I needed that car. I can give you, I can even give you half a million extra and to, just to give me the car. The man said, eh, six months waiting list. 
I just want to show you what spiritual blessing does. You know, there are people, every time when you work for, we are in training of the ministry of the kingdom. Why when you are a man of God, the main thing when you start a church, you think of money. You think I'm going to be prosperous if I can be like him. Now, if you can go for spiritual blessings before anything, are we clear? You are not going to work hard. With spiritual blessings, you don't work hard. I repeat with spiritual blessings, you know, spiritual blessings include grace and unmerited favor. Something you don't work for, but God gives it to you anyway. Are we clear? I mean, angels, they respond quickly, like lightning. You don't know what happens with your mind. Are we clear? So if you can learn one thing, spiritual blessing is the best. And once you have that, don't worry, it deals with your body at the same time. Spiritual blessing does not come without dealing with the body. Your body will not be your body. You operate supernaturally. Because if it, they can change somebody else's mind, how much more about you carrying spiritual blessings? Are we clear? So they attract. They do what? They attract. If we can believe that, I'm telling you we're going somewhere. Do we love Jesus Christ? When I build and bought this farm... We, we don't, it didn't even have 500,000 in the bank, nothing. But because of spiritual blessing, everything gets paid. It has to. It has to be like that. Are we going somewhere? It has to be like The thing is, uh, people uh, like saying, um, I'm only human. You'll operate as human. No, I'm human. I'm human. You'll operate as human. And some of the things, just before you go into heaven, when you finish, God will show you, look what you're supposed to do on earth. Look. This is what. Now, do you think you'll come in? Some of you have to go back and suffer. I repeat. Go back and you'll hear the teaching today. Go and suffer. Because what's happening, if you suffer more, that's when I reveal myself. Huh? I repeat. It's Romans, it's Romans chapter 8. If you are to share in his glory, you want to share in his glory. If you are to share in his glory, you also have to share in his sufferings. So people want the glory. What about sharing? What about sharing? So share with him. And in sharing, that's where you receive. I repeat. In sharing, that's where you receive. That's why many don't understand. I want to be like that one. I want to be like that one. I want to be like, how did they get that one? The problem is you don't know your time zone. You don't know your time zone. So if you can focus on your time zone, you will make an impact all over the world. Because you focus on your very own, your own time zone. If you focus on your own time zone, God knows this is a plan of God concerning your life. Three years to come. You compare with yourself with someone 14 years ago. They don't come together. They don't come together. Focus on three years to come. And don't focus on someone who is 60. Focus on where God... That's why we have people today... Some people became presidents at the age of 50. After the, what, the one of the age of 50, he retires at 55. The one who becomes a president, Abraham, he's 70. Was it necessary for them to compete? Time zone. God knew this one, at the age of 55, he must retire. Because it's God who puts in kings and removes kings. The other one resumes at the age of 70. Are we clear? Are we clear? Are we clear? So, if you can know your time zone and not compare yourself with anyone, Jesus experienced no serious problem with disciples. Everyone will come, who is the greatest? Why do you have to suffer with who is the greatest? Focus on who you are, what God planned for you, and you'll see prosperity. You'll attract. So keep, keep spiritual blessings. If you keep such, they will attract everything that you need. With spiritual blessing, you say, let there be. Let there be. Let there be. Let there be. And it happens. So what I'm saying, it's still grace. Something you do not deserve. Something you do not work for. But God gives it to you anyway. So set your mind on things that are from above. Money does not come from above. Huh? Okay, some people are funny now. Ne? Money does not come from above. They do it, they're immigrant. 
Yeah, and after we get it here in church, do we give it to God? Do we see me going on a leather say, God, I brought your money? No, it goes to the bank. We buy these things here. We build here. We do. God gets nothing. And what is happening after I do everything? When God is pleased, he calls it service delivery. Huh? And after he's pleased, that's when he can dwell amongst us. Are we clear? So what must we do? Set your mind on things that are from above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. So if you set your mind on things that are from there, meditate more upon them. And when, they, when you are overshadowed by such, it attracts anything. It attracts anything. Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? So I'm training people who are not going to work hard. Are we clear? Are we clear? Your blessing is not the blessing of Adam where you have to sweat and work the ground. Because later, Noah came to set people free who are toiling and working on the ground. That's the meaning of the name Noah. The one who came to save us from toiling and working the ground. But he failed because he went back and worked the ground and he drank from the ground where he was working. He became drunk. So God had to look for the next leader who is Abraham. And when he brought Abraham, Abraham, the father of faith, not hard work. Are we clear? The father of what? The father of what? Faith, not hard work. So why the father of faith? God gave him, many Melchizedek gave him the bread and wine. After having it, the other king came and said, Abraham, give me the people and take possessions because he won the battle. So Abraham said, I will never receive anything from you. Who do you trust? He said, I will never get anything from you lest you say I made Abraham rich. So I don't want anybody to say I made you rich. I want to help you. Are we clear? Are we clear? So I don't want, he says, I don't want anything from you lest you say I made Abraham rich. And you must check the same chapter 13 Genesis. When it starts, from, it says Abraham was very rich. But it was nothing. That was not. That was nothing. When it finishes, chapter fourteen. Also, when it starts, it talks about how Abraham, how he was rich, and then when he ate the body in the blood, and then he said to the other one, he said, "No, the other king, I not receive any from you, lest unless if I have what I, what my young men have eaten, so I can only have that. This is what they've eaten." So if I, he could see into his soldiers that they've eaten what he ate, the body and the blood. So God comes and says, chapter 14, blessed be Abraham, by God most high. I am your shield. I am your butler. Now real riches are coming. God speaks. God says, blessed be Abraham, by God most high. He says, I'm your shield. I'm your butler. You're covered. You're protected, first of all. He says, I'm your abundant compensation. Where do we find that? Ephesians chapter 3. I will bless you exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ever asked or thought or imagined. You get it? Above your thinking, I will bless you. So that's true wealth now. Now, it's, I know, that's where we come now, spiritual blessing. He says, but now you give me everything. He is not aware that this is a spiritual blessing. Because chapter 13, it says he was rich. Are we clear? But chapter 14, God says, I'm your abundant compensation. I'm your shield. I'm your butler. Now, he's not aware that this is spiritual blessing. Why? He said to God, but now, who will be my heir? Who's going to have my inheritance? He says, my servant is the one who's going to have, because I don't have a child. He's not aware. But now, spiritual blessing attracts. Are we clear? Now, God says, no, it's not your servant, it will be the one who comes from your loins. That one will be your heir. Why? If spiritual blessing is upon you, ah, blessed are you when you are barren. If you are dead here and your wife is dead, I repeat, if you are dead here and your wife is dead, it says Abraham and Sarah were dead, meaning they could not conceive. But people are not aware that it's a blessing. People are not aware. Get this. They were both dead. Are we clear? One grain must die. A seed must die in order to produce many. So, 
died. So, you meet someone who is still alive, you are dead. I have it again. So, Sarah was dead, Abraham was dead. So, they had to produce many. So, that's why God says, look now at the stars. Look at the ground. You are dead. Those who are dead will produce like this. You will never even count above your thinking, above your thoughts, above your imaginations. Are we clear? It's above because you are dead. So that's why I'm saying we are dying here. You can't plant a seed which is alive. You can't plant a seed which is alive. Because if you plant what is alive, what's going to happen? It's going to die. So what's happening? You have to, it has to die. The sun must burn it. Persecutions, hardships, suffering, everything. So that it can produce many. So I'm saying our wealth is in the spirit. Our money it's more than material. It's in the spirit. Are we clear? So, spiritual blessings attract material. Are we clear? So, we are going to give right now. Do we love giving? Is somebody ready to give? Is somebody ready to give? Huh? It is God who gives the seed to the sower and the bread to the eater. Seed is for sowing, and you cannot sow what is alive. It has to be dead. Are we clear? It has to be so dry. That's why I say one grain must die in order to produce many. So Abraham's loins were dead. Sarah, dead. When they meet, dead, dead. Are we clear? Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? So they produce the best. You are here to produce best companies, best, you know, are we clear? Best companies, best ministries, best, you know, best houses, best cars, everything, because now you were dead. Go and get the unusuals, the uncommon. Are we clear? So we're going to give, we also have our products. Those who want to buy our products, you can just buy them and bless yourself. We have t-shirts, we get DVDs. Hey, those women, they're dangerous. So you can just buy and bless yourself. That side, can you catch? Can you catch? Who wants to get married? <laughs> this side. Good, 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 good. Today, there's no such as I'm old, I'm 65 years. They jump, these people. They jump. Say, I love you, Jesus. So from this side, you can run. That side, you can run. From that side. From that side. If you're slow, you get nothing. From that side. Ah, from that side. If you're slow, you get nothing. Ah, madam, got the money slippers of ocean is low. You must run faster, madam. Run, bless you. <laughs> Which side? Tell a red beam. Say love with Jesus. So those who want to buy, you go to the bookshop, buy quickly whatever you want to buy. If you don't have cash, you can still use a bank card to buy whatever. Um, we're going to give right now. We're going to offer. Those who want to partner with RTV, let's take those partnership forms. Let's partner. Blessed, if you are watching there, wherever you're watching all over the world, there are account numbers appearing on your television screen. You can take those account numbers and begin to give as the Lord speaks to you, as the Spirit leads, according to what the Lord has given you when He speaks. Let's give together for we are in the same place right now in His presence. Those who want to give, if you want to partner as well, you can take those partnership forms. Let's partner for the glory of God. Those who want to partner even for your church to partner with RTV, you can partner. Individuals, you can take these partnership forms. Let's partner together. Do we love Rabboni TV? Do you enjoy RTV? So let's, let's partner for the glory of God and spread the gospel together. You become a fellow soldier as we partner. So we're going to offer, we're going to tithe. Um... Those who don't have cash, you can use a bank card, go to the bookshop. 
they will show you we have machines there you can just give whatever god says you must give go swipe your card and give prophetic offering you can still go there they'll give you account numbers for prophetic offering i'm ready to give i'm ready to give if you want me to bless your bank card you can come and bless it before you can go and give
Thank you for giving us life from above in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet.
Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say, God is wonderful. Say, God is wonderful. Say, God is truly wonderful. Amen. Let's have our seat. Amen. God is wonderful. Tell your neighbor, say, God is wonderful. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. Say, God is wonderful. Amen. Amen. This is the time where all of us will carry what is perfect in us, if we understand. Amen. We have to carry what is perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we love Jesus Christ? We have to carry what is perfect. So, in agreement of two, Mountains can be moved. All things are possible. In agreement of two, it is possible. But do you agree with God with the situation that you're going through? Would you agree with God? Because some of the things when they happen in life, it's like it was not supposed to happen. But now we forget that when we become born again, we already embarked in a journey, not our own, but God's own journey. Jesus says, I'm the way to the Father. He says, I'm the way to, to the Father. So the moment you want to go to the Father, you have to get in the way. And if you get in the way, what is happening on the way? What is happening on the, on the way? Do we love Jesus Christ? Things will happen, such things as persecution, suffering, going through hardships, tests, and everything. Are we clear? Are we clear? Do we love Jesus Christ? So God has chosen his treasure to go into what is weak. God has chosen his treasure to go into what is weak. And the moment you carry treasure, know that you attract persecutions, fights, criticisms, but God has put it into what is weak. Into what is weak. Do we love Father? Remember, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty works. I will show you things fenced, things hidden, things never seen before. Because everybody wants what is strange. When the Bible says Peter and others began to do extraordinary works, don't you want to do that? Everybody wants to be listed among those who are doing what is better or the great. Everybody wants to be listed. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? Remember Philippians 2, even though Jesus was a king, he was already God, but he did not use that for his own advantage. Instead, he took a form of a servant and God exalted him. God did what? If you take a form of a servant, meaning... He chose to be weak even though he was given such glory. He chose to be weak. So you must get it. Even though he was God, but because he came on earth, he had to take a form of a, of a servant. Now, look, he's like that. He takes a form of a servant. He's not yet there. When he was like that on earth, he's not yet there. Because what's the difference? The moment it says it, in every way, he was God. But now he takes a former servant and God exalted him. It means before, though he was like that, God had not yet exalted him. So he has not yet been exalted, but he was like. I repeat. Philippians 2, in every, he was like God. But now the reason for him to humble himself and take a former servant, he's on earth. He is on, on earth. And God exalted. Even when you are on earth and you are like. You are like. But you need to take a form of it. And it will attract what? People will undermine you. People will do whatever. I mean, we are here as men and women of God. You must get it. People will undermine you. People will just speak whatever. And especially because of what you do. You are like. Because you do things like like 
Now, for a better thing to come, you take a former servant. If you take a former servant, he exalts you. I mean, he wouldn't exalt him if he didn't take a form of a servant. The fact is, he's on earth. He takes a form of a servant so that God can cause some level. For us to achieve some levels, it will not talk, only take righteousness. It will also take humility. Are we clear? It will also take what? Humility. So I want us to understand all of us. Because many people, they, they, they want power. They want power. They want the glory. But how do we achieve such? You want God's power to rest in you. You want God's power to live in you. You want to uh, be a carrier of power. But let's see what kind of a body carries power. What kind of a body carries power? Remember the same Jeremiah, chapter 33. Call unto me, I will answer. How do you call? Which state are you when you call? Which state are you when you call? People just call. The fact remains, what state are you in when you call? What state? People call. Check your state before you call. There won't be an answer if you're not in the right state. I want somebody to get this now. What state are you in when you call? People have been calling, but we don't see hidden things. The fact remains, people don't check their state when they call. People who are calling in the way are people who call when they can't do anything. I'm weak. Call unto me when you are which state? Weakness. In a state of weakness. I can't do it. Call. But now, many call while they have their own part of strength. Not God's strength. They go, you are calling, you are calling. God cannot enter such body. Come on, read Isaiah 48. Let's take it from verse 6. Isaiah 48, take it from verse 6. Which state are you in when you call? It says, call unto me, I will answer. But people call, there's no answer. People call, we don't see strange things. We don't see hidden things. The fact is, when we call, what state are we in? Are we clear? What state are we in? You call with your energy. That's the problem. You call with your gifts. You call with your gifts. Are we clear? People think God hears them when their gifts are operating. Gifts operate without prayer. I repeat, gift can operate without prayer because gifts of God are without repentance. They are without repentance. You can, uh, op, gift can operate without prayer. Some of the gifts, don't bother yourself and pray for a gift of healing, whatever. No, if it's a gift, let it, it will operate. But when you want God to manifest upon the gift, love upon the gift, that's when you can speak with God. Call unto me, which state are you in when you call? We heal the sick in your name. We cast out demons in his name. We prophesy in your name. Were they praying? They used the name. Those were gifts. They were functioning. We are functioning. You see a person being healed, the man who God said, I, I've prayed for, that for a long time. And, no, that's a gift. If it's a gift, let you operate. Somebody is listening funny. Religion is crushed today. Are we clear? Religion must be crushed. Are we learning something? Because now a lot of people, I, I, I believe we say something, I can feel the atmosphere now. Are we clear? The gifts of God are without repentance. You haven't repented, you are a sinner, you have a gift. Do you have to go and pray for it to work? It will work. It will work. The fact remains when we pray, what are we doing? Are you calling? Which state are you in? Which state are you in? Now, read, read, read there. Read there. You have heard these things foretold. Now you see this fulfillment. Uh -huh. And you will not bear witness to it. You will not bear witness to it? Uh -huh. I show you 
specified new things from this time forth. I show you specified new things from this time forth. I show you specified new things from this time forth. And now, what is happening? We take it from Jeremiah 33. Call unto me and I will show you new. I will show you great and mighty. Uh-huh. Just repeat. Start again. You have heard these things foretold. You have heard these things foretold. Now you see this fulfillment. Now you see this fulfillment. And will you not bear witness to it? And will you not bear witness to it? I show you specified new things. Will you not bear witness to it? Will you not bear witness to it? Will you not bear witness to it? Are you going to testify about it? What state are you in in order for you to qualify to testify about it? John 5, the Father testifies on behalf of the Son and the Son testifies on behalf of the Father. Will you be able? Repeat. Let's hear it. Repeat. That, that question it's, will you be able, what state are you in before you can witness? Let's go. You have heard these things foretold. You have heard these things foretold. Now you see this fulfillment. Now you see this fulfillment. And will you not bear witness to it? And will you not bear witness to it? Are we clear? Uh-huh. I show you specified new things. I show you specified new things. Go on. I show you specified new things from uh -huh. this time forth. From this time forth, I show you specified new things. Uh -huh. Even hidden things kept in reserve which you have not known. Even hidden things kept in reserve which you have not known. There are things that God kept in reserve. And not everybody will do such. We are men and women of God here. It means there are specific people who will be partakers of such reserved things. There are things that God reserved waiting for specific people. Are we clear? Now you read the Bible, in my name you'll heal the sick, in your mind, my name you'll cast out demons, in my name you prophesy, in my... Those are not reserved. There are things that are reserved for specifically people who know how to call. There are things that are reserved. Now, now you hear people saying there's nothing like the unrecorded, there's not. If we say there's nothing like the unrecorded, there's nothing like greater things then. Because greater things are unknown. So when he says you do what I've done and even greater things, in greater things there are things reserved. There are things, that's why uh, you won't get the book of one of the disciples. Some of them we get Peter, we get Mark, we get James, we go to, it's written about them. But Bethlehemio, it's not written. Andrew, it's not written. Do you know what they've done? Because some of them God had to reserve what they were doing. God had to reserve so that someone can come and do them and say, this is what they've been doing. Some of the things had to be reserved. Now, you read Romans 16. How can the Apostle Paul talk about people who were with him and he calls them hard workers, the, 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 the Priscilla's, the Aquila's, and uh, the, the, the Mary's. He quotes them, he says, these people have been hard workers. He says, these people are even better than apostles. Can you imagine? There are things, the things that they were doing were reserved. You read about Peter, what they've done, the shadow and everything. It's nothing compared to those who are mentioned in Romans 16. Because the apostle Paul says, they were even doing better. They were above the apostles. So there are things that are reserved that people don't know about. So the apostle Paul says they were even above the apostles. So there are things reserved. Are we clear? So it means what they were doing was something more than extraordinary. Let's go. Let's go. You get it. 
I show you specified new things. I show you specified new things. From this time forth. From this time forth. Even hidden things. Even hidden things. Kept in reserve which you have not known. Kept in reserve which you have not known. So, who are you to say what is God doing? What is that man doing? Who are you when God says hidden things which people didn't know? Reserved. Hidden. Are we going somewhere? Hidden. Hidden things. So, I want us to get all of us. You are not going to go out here without such. I want to train people who do even better and go above. To an extent that those who know the common, they will try you. When they try you, they will discover that, that this is hidden. I thought I knew. What state were they in when they called you? Did they call you or did they call God? Call unto me. Don't look unto people. Don't look at what they do. Are we going somewhere? Go on. They are created now. They are created now. Called into being by the prophetic word. Called into being by the prophetic word. It's not a gift that will do those things. It's the word spoken. Let there be. Let there be. Now Jeremiah comes in Jeremiah chapter 32. He says, this is the word of the Lord. The cousin came to sell their uncle's land in the land of Benjamin. And now when they sell the land, he buys the land. Now, everybody would say, but your prophecy said this place will be destroyed. How can you buy what will be destroyed? Because the word of the Lord said, we will come back again. Land will be sold. Yeah. Yeah. Land will be sold again. Now, he says, now the title deeds, let them come too. Now, title deeds have been put away into earthen vessel or clay. Are we clear? They are put in there so that they may last. You must get it. It says so that they can last. So that they can last. If they last, it means they remain. But if you look into earthen vessel of clay, this is a wicked state. How can God use clay to carry his own title deeds? Repeat that part. We'll get it. They are created now. They are created now. Called into being by the prophetic. Called into being by what? By the prophetic word. By the prophetic word. They are called into being by the prophetic word. So it is impossible for that to happen. That which Jeremiah said. You buy land. And the king of Babylon is going to come. He's going to destroy everything here. But you buy land there. It's impossible. So calling it into being by the prophetic word, people will come here and buy land again. So when they come and buy, now it means when Jeremiah bought that land at the time, it was cheap. It means it was very cheap. So its value will go up when they come back. So when he comes back, he's got treasure. Are we clear? Are we clear? So they are called into being by the prophetic Wait, that's why I'm saying the best thing to have is spiritual blessing. If you have it, it will attract. Are we clear? Are we clear? Let's go. They are created now. They are created now. Called into being by the prophetic word. Called into being by the prophetic word. And not long ago. Uh huh. And before today, you've never heard of them. Before Lest today, you've never heard of them. Uh huh. Lest you should say, Behold, I knew them. Lest you should say, I knew them. There are lots of things that happened through my life. I didn't know them. I become frustrated. I say, God, what is this? God, what is happening now? Teach me what you have given me. Because knowing how to call unto God, you'll get it. The state that you're in matters. I may train you. You may come, but know that you're embarking into a journey. Something has to happen to your body. And not easy. Something has to happen to your body. And it must not be easy. It will not be easy. Tough. If you want me to train you, we are going to share first in the sufferings.
So you will know. So once we share, that leads you to know how to call. Because if you don't share, you don't know how to call. If you don't know how to call, you are going to be a rebellious son. Read. Okay, let's leave it there. Go back to Jeremiah 32. I just wanted to get that. Say love with Jesus. Say love with Jesus. Say love with my father. Say I'm blessed above all. Say I'm truly blessed from above. Say love with my Lord. Are we learning something today? Are we learning something? Say love with Jesus. Say I'm truly, truly blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read there. Say love with my Jesus. Say love with my Lord. Read from verse 13. And I charged Baruch before them, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both this purchased deed, which is sealed and this unsealed deed. Which is sealed and unsealed, the meaning it's two title deeds. There's the one that is sealed, the one that is unsealed. We remember in the Second Corinthians chapter 4, our gospel is hidden, sealed to those who are perishing, and it's opened to those who believe. This is the glory of the gospel of Jesus shining on his face. It's revealed. This was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but this was revealed to you by my Father in? Read on. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both this purchased deed which is sealed, uh -huh. and this unsealed deed, uh -huh. and put them in an earthen vessel. Put them in an earthen vessel? In an earthen vessel uh-huh that they may last a long time that they may last a long time earthen vessel is weak it can break it's weak but when he puts treasure earthen vessel will last are we clear it will second corinthians chapter 4 start from verse 7 earthen vessel clay vessel of clay is Weak. So call unto me, I will show you hidden things. Things reserved, things that you don't know. Lest you say, I know them. You see, God always wants to be God. He will not come and answer you with what you know. You will say, but I know this. Now you pray, Father, I want a car, I want a job. Somebody has been in that office, you enter that office. It's come on. How about you coming carrying what is not common? You enter the office, the office gets surprised. Say, I never knew this. So you give the office favor that it never had. It's all about you, the vessel. It's all about you, the vessel. Let's go. However, we possess this precious treasure. However, we possess this precious treasure. Where? The divine light of the gospel. The divine light of the gospel. Uh huh. In frail human vessels of earth. In frail human vessels of earth, meaning in clay. So Jeremiah says, this, this title did, let them be in earthen vessel of clay. So the Apostle Paul says, it's us. We possess this treasure. We carry this title deed in us. Second Corinthians chapter 3, he says, in us, what we carry, aroma, Two aromas, aroma of life and aroma of death. To others, when we come, ah, death has come. To others, when you come, ah, life. Now, we carry in our body what? In this earthen vessel of clay, what do we carry? Two title deeds. The other one is open to those who believe they can see. They call unto God, they can see. If you call unto God, you can know what is in your brother. If you call unto God, you'll know what is reserved in him. What is unknown, what is unheard, what has never seen before. But if you disbelieve, you perish, you don't see it. Because the other one is sealed. The other one is unsealed. The other one that is sealed, it's veiled to those who are perishing and they are spiritually dying. So you are dangerous. If you are carrying that in your human vessel of clay, if you carry that, you are busy causing others to die spiritually. They are dying spiritually. Some begin to see. 
That's what Jesus says in John chapter 9. He says, I've come to blind those who claim to see. If you blind them, they're spiritually dying. And I've come to open the eyes of those who cannot see. Those who cannot see, they accept, I don't know. Then what is reserved is given unto them. Lest, that's why it says, lest you say, ah, but I know. So God does not want to answer us with what we know. Healing, we know. Deliverance, we know. Prophecy, we know. We heal the sick in your name. We prophesy in your name. Because that he was going to give because it's abilities given to the disciples even before the Holy Spirit can come. How can you get what is reserved when the Holy Spirit had not yet come? They were doing all these things before the Holy Spirit can come. Some people think when the Holy Spirit comes, you receive gifts. No, you receive gifts before the Holy Spirit comes. Yeah. They had abilities. They were healing the sick. They were casting out demons. They were prophesying before Acts chapter 2. Jesus sent them to do those things. So that doesn't mean when the Holy Spirit did. Read in Acts chapter 2. Where do we see gifts coming? No, the Holy Spirit came. They received a language. So if you receive a language, you receive what God speaks. The, this is the word of the Lord. This happened by the word of the Lord. They were so weak, they never had title deeds in them. That's why I looked into Jesus prays for them. He says, I prayed for you because the devil is belonging to sift, especially you, Peter. The devil is belonging. So the only thing that can cover you, I prayed for you. There's no title deed, you can die. You only carry abilities, you can die. It can be over with you. Read there. However, uh -huh. we possess this precious treasure. However, we possess this precious treasure. The divine light of the gospel. The divine light of the gospel. In frail human vessels of earth. In frail human vessels of earth, clay, where Jeremiah put two title deeds. You get it? Uh huh. That the grandeur and the exceeding greatness of the power. That the exceeding greatness, please underline it. The exceeding greatness of the power uh -huh, may be shown to be from God. May be shown to be from God, reserved, lest you say, I know. Repeat there, repeat there. However, However we, we possess this precious treasure, uh -huh, the divine light of the gospel. The divine light of the gospel. In frail human vessels of earth. In frail human vessels of earth. That the grandeur. What's the reason? That the. The grandeur and the exceeding greatness. The grandeur and the exceeding greatness. Uh -huh, of the power. Of the power. May be shown to be from God. May and be shown not, to be from God. And not from ourselves. And not from ourselves. Isaiah 48, you get it, ne? And not from ourselves. Meaning, when it says from not ourselves, we are frail human vessels of clay. It means we are weak. It means we are. So for the exceeding power to live in you, for the exceeding greatness of God to live in you, you have to be weak in order to know how to call him. Ah. So, the Apostle Paul comes with a message. God will use inferior things. In your weaknesses, God's strength is made perfect. So, that power is made perfect in weaknesses, in clay. In vessels of clay. So, who is a vessel of clay? That's why I'm saying to carry the power, what kind of a state or what state are you in? So people call unto God with their energy. That's why they don't see such strength made perfect. Such power is made perfect in earthen vessels of clay. That's why God said to Jeremiah, let this title deeds be in an earthen vessels of clay so that they may last a long time. Repeat that part. Because many people are crying for power. Am I right? You go, you want impartation. There's impartation that we'll get, but power you will not get. What state are you in? What kind of a vessel are you? What kind of a vessel are you? Allow them to break you. Allow them to speak about you. 
Allow them to write stories about you. Allow them to speak against you. Allow them to criticize you and feel that I can do nothing. There's nothing I can do. I don't know anybody in the newspapers who can write a positive story on my behalf. I don't know. But the only one I know, Lord, there's a thorn in my flesh. I am weak. I am weak. There's no strength. There's no power. So allow them. So as a man of God, you don't need to go to someone for impartation of this. You need to know the state that you're supposed to be in based on who you are, your flesh, your earthen vessel. Repeat that part. I want everybody to concentrate and hear it correctly. We've been reading about this, a thorn in my flesh. But let's hear what's happening there. Read. However, we possess this precious treasure, the divine light of the gospel. We possess this treasure, the divine light of the gospel. In frail human vessels of earth. In frail human vessels of? Earth. Of what? Of earth. Uh-huh. That the grandeur and the exceeding greatness that of the power. That the grandeur power. and the exceeding greatness. Uh-huh. Of the power. Of the power. May be shown to be from God. May be shown to be from. In other words, as men and women of God, whatever we do must be shown to be from God. <laughs> must be shown to be from and how will it be shown to be from God? People will speak bigger about it. People will plot for it. People will make plans and try to make sure that people see it bad. People will try to make sure that people look at you and have different minds, bad minds about you. So allow it. Allow it. They don't know what they're doing. Allow it. Allow it. Are we going somewhere? Read there. Read there. We are hedged in. We are hedged in. Pressed on every pressed side. Pressed on every side. Traveled. Traveled. And oppressed in every way. And oppressed in every way. But not crammed or crushed. Not crushed. Why are you not crushed? Because you are an earthen vessel of clay. Why not crushed? Because an earthen vessel of clay must be crushed. It's because it's an earthen vessel of clay. It's weak. But who came? Somebody exalts it. Somebody takes it to another level. Somebody gives it, somebody makes his strength perfect in him. Now, leave it there. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, start from verse 9. I want you to concentrate on verse 9. That power is made perfect where? In earthen vessel of clay, weak. Weak. Allow it to happen. You see, me, I wanted the people who are listening to me, even those who are criticizing, who are persecuting, please, I've given you the opportunity. Go and do it more. Go and let me advise you, there are many newspapers in the country, there are TV stations. I want you to go and speak. I want you to use your own platform and stand as a prophet and begin to say, I have a demon, I need deliverance. I, go, I want you to do it. I want you to do it. I want everybody to stand and I want you to do it. Because if it happened 2014, when it happened January, I had to come with petrol to raise up the standard of the grass which you're speaking about. To show that the exceeding greatness is not from me, it's from God. So when it happens, because we carry treasure in this earthen vessel of clay. So I'm weak. Somebody said this and that person is reputable. Ah. Somebody said this, I'm weak. I know. But when I come and stand here, it's no longer I, it's Christ because of the exceeding greatness of the power. So let it happen. I want it to be that way. Plan. Send women. Implicate me with women. Do anything. I want it. 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 Let it come. I love it. In fact, I enjoy it. Let it come. I want it. Read, read there. Read there. Kabarata. Let's go. Read there. Listen. But he said to me. But he said to me. My grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy. Is enough for you. No, look, I'm simply reading that so that because we all know. I'm studying here because we all know. But I want you to hear the mystery of this. 
But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Are we clear? Why did God let the apostle to go through that? Because this is frail human vessel of clay. It has to be weak. For what reason? Let's go. You'll get it. But he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Uh -huh. It's sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. It's sufficient against any danger. So you are weak, frail human vessel. But you will not be crushed. You are weak. Are we going somewhere? Now you'll get it. What was the Apostle Paul doing here? Yeah. This is Jeremiah 33. Call unto me. Call unto me. Call. Call. Father. Father. You're calling. Call unto me. I will answer. I will show you great. When I'm weak, I found strength. When I'm blind, I can see now. When I'm weak, I'm strong. Now, I want, you to, I want you to hear this part. Listen to this. For my strength and power Aye. are made perfect. Yay. They're fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in your weakness. In your weakness in clay. In clay. Now, that clay looks inferior. It looks young. It looks thin. Maybe like me. It looks thin. It looks weak. People look at you, they undermine you. We can say whatever we want. We can plan whatever we want. We can do whatever. Now, yet my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So the Apostle Paul, what was he doing here? He was fulfilling Jeremiah 33. Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty works. So he's calling Father, remove this stone. It's painful. God says, my grace is sufficient. So my strength is made perfect. You see, this kind of power, for you to get it, you don't get it by saying, man of God, pray for me. I need power. You have to become an earthen vessel of clay. You become weak. Because God wants to make it perfect. And as you become weak, you took a form of a servant without choice. When you take a form of a servant, though in everything you are like, but he uplifts you. He exalts you. He takes you high. When he takes you, that strength is made perfect in earthen vessel of clay, in your weakness. What kind of people call unto him? What state are you in when you call him? Are you weak or do you have your own energy? Do you have your own English knowing how to talk? Do you have your own strength? Do you have your own energy? So many call, but we don't see power. And you call healing power. It's not power. You call deliverance power. It's not power. You call prophecy power. It's not power. So this is the moment where God reveals reserved things. Giving them to the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Now, call unto me, you are weak. God will want to do it so that you may, must not say, it is me or I know. God wants to give you what is reserved, what you don't know, what you've never seen, what you've never heard. So many, it's difficult to be weak, but you want to call. What state are you in when you call? Many people want to call unto him. What state are you in? Will you get what is reserved when you are just strong in your own observation? So the state that you're in is the one that qualifies you to call. The state of weakness qualifies one to call. And definitely, your reserved answer is guaranteed. Your reserved answer is guaranteed. Things you never knew. And when they happen, people say, what is this? Don't we know his brothers? Don't we know? Didn't we grow up with this boy in Harangua? Didn't we know? Don't we? We know this boy. A lot of people say, we know him. We know him. We went with him to school. He grew up next to us. But while you are busy... You go to your state of weakness. Let them talk. I invite them. Talk. 
I know what God is doing. I allow them to do it. Tested by your people. Your people, meaning your Christian. The prophets, the apostles, the pastors. All of a sudden tested by the cult. Everybody testing. Cult, from your side, everything tested. Everything tested. Anyway, anywhere, anyhow, you become in a state of weakness. And we think it's a dangerous life. When that strength is made perfect, you go anywhere. Some would look at you and say, we wish we can just do whatever. And now, you, when you go, you go, I wish I could meet with him and do whatever to him. But wherever you go, don't you know, if strength is made perfect, if power is made perfect in you, do you know you, you change in any form? Some, they will see you, but they, that thing which they promised themselves to do against you, when they look at you, it's gone. Do we love Jesus Christ? So I want us to get this. Because we are men and women of God in training of the matters of the kingdom. Many people say, I want impartation, I want power, I want war. What state are you in? What state are you in? Call unto me. If I'm weak and that power is made perfect in me. So the moment I come to you and you are a mystery as well, because mysteries are declared among the matured. If you are, because I called unto God, he's able to show me what is in you and I can approve you. I can approve you. I can confirm you. You are the Christ, son of the living God. You are Peter. You are the rock. Gates of hell shall never prevail. Because now God shows me reserved things in you. While others are saying you're not of God. It's because others never became weak. Many people are just hard workers. Many people are just hard workers. Traveling, doing whatever. Doing, you're just looking for impartation. What state are you in? Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you reserved things. This is the same. Second Corinthians chapter 12, it's Jeremiah 33. So the apostle Paul called. He called. He knocked and he kept on knocking. He asked and he kept on asking. He kept on asking. Three times. The door shall be opened. The door of unreserved. The door of reserved power. The door of the unknown. Read it. You don't want to be a man of God and find yourself dishing out what is common all the time. Deliverance here, please. Healing here, please. Prophecy here, please. Moreover, it says they will be stilled, they will cease. Why are you stuck with what will cease and be stilled? Ah. Why are you stuck with that? Because I want you to get that you are stuck, you are satisfied. Some people are satisfied in a false manner. That, look, I can do them, I can do them, but never think I delight in them. First, delight in the Lord. And he shall give you, un <laughs> and he shall give you what is reserved. First, delight in him. He shall give you what is unknown. If you delight in him, you are ready to share with him. If you share with me in my sufferings, you share with me in my glory. Yeah. It says, first delight in the Lord. Many delight in gifts. I maybe do them. You may be healed. You may be delivered. I can give you a word of prophecy. But now, I don't delight in it. It doesn't set me free. What set me free is when his power is made perfect in my weakness. So it will be tough. They experience stress because they worry about their issues. You experience stress because you worry about what you don't know. Father, I'm weak. I don't know this. Lord, I don't know. You know. Come, Ezekiel. Tell these bones. Let me give you the reserved. Let me give you what is reserved. I'll show you things reserved. 
so that you must not say it is you or so that you must not say I know or I knew them. God wants to remain God. Are we learning something? Are we learning something? Do we learn something? So, I want you to understand, you are here, you receive some of the strange things. When you go, when they persecute you, say, yes, it's part of what I received. But what I'm saying, listen, what I'm saying, what you get now, it's accompanied by... It's accompanied by... Simple, attracted. Don't tell them you're from your auntie in Pretoria. I'm not your auntie. Do I look like an auntie? Tell them my name. Tell them where you come from so that you can arouse that thing that plans persecution. So that you can arouse that thing that comes out with plotting against you. Arouse it. Arouse it. Wear that t-shirt. Wear that cap. And go to your church. Do it. Because why does it happen that way? There's a plan. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Timothy, do not blush. Do not be ashamed to testify about Christ. Even me. Share with me in my sufferings so that the gospel you preach share with me in my so that the gospel you preach will expose you. So you are preaching, it does not expose you. You fail to share. You fail to, he says, share with me in my sufferings so that the gospel you preach will expose you. So don't be shy. Don't call me your auntie. Do I look like an auntie? Am I not like a man? Do you love Jesus Christ? Yeah. So what I mean is, you must get this. Many people love, imp hey, they love impartation. And those who want impartation, they're from many impartations. And you end up being mpa, stomachation, impartation, impartation. You get it? Why don't you get something that brings fulfillment once and for all? Are we clear? Because you'll be from many, from many. It's the same gift, the same gift. The same gift. But there are things which are called reserved things in the presence of God. And you can only get them when you call unto him in witness. In a state of weakness, when you call unto him, he gives you. Because you must not say, I'm the one who stood up. He exalted you. Because the more it becomes like that, you take a form of a servant, you serve them. Are we going somewhere? That's what Are we learning something? So the same Jeremiah that there is here. Read. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses. So therefore, I will glory in my weaknesses. Let me glory in it and say, come, do it. I give you the opportunity. There's another newspaper which is weak. Go there, they take any story. Go and, and say anything that I do. I've got zombies around me. I've got... I delight in it. Why the Apostle Paul would say that? I'm saying it like that now. Do you think my heart now, I'm still afraid of anything? I'm gone, I'm dead. I'm dead. You can't kill what is dead already. <laughs> Manifestations, the presence of God. When that presence, what is hidden is revealed. God cannot, in witnesses, God cannot hide his reserved glory, his reserved power. In witnesses, he delights in showing it in witnesses. So in frail human earthly vessel, I would say weakness. He puts his treasure. He puts his treasure. The apostle, apostle so we carry treasure in this earthen vessel of clay. We carry. God made his strength perfect in our weaknesses. So you understand this chapter, eh? 
We have been reading about it. We have teachings about it. But this is exactly Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33, call unto me. You call because there's nothing that you can do. It is only God who can do it. Then you come to Philippians 4. I can do all things, not through my strength, but through Christ who strengthens me. Read. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities. I will gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities. So it's good for them to make you weak. Sit down and say, yeah, hey, this man really hates me. Yo, how can you do this? You check yourself. I'm a boy. Look at me. How can this man? When you look, you see this man is old. How can you do this? And you hear God saying, it's good. This is what I want, my son. It's also exposing and showing the reality. Say, this man hates me. How can you do this? This is real hatred. But now later you begin to realize the word of God. You said, yes, it was good. He had to do it. He had to do that. Because now look after he has done this. Look at how God produces more out of me. Look how God reaching out a lot of people. Look how many men and women of God God produces in and out of the country through this. Look how it opens their eyes because I've come to open the eyes of those who can see and to blind those who claim to see. So how, look how, because they see that this person is not destroyed, things are happening to him, but he's still standing and saying, no, this must be true, I'm going to it. Eyes are opened. Eyes that could not see get opened. Are we clear? Eyes that cannot see are now opened. The thing is, many people, you want the worldly favor. Many people go for worldly favor for the world to love you and you misunderstood it. The world must hate you. And the world is not the world because they know nothing. Those who know nothing are not like the world. That's the world. The world are those people who knew God but they live like the world. The world of the... So the world... Look, the world, let me teach you about the world. The world is looking for miracle signs on one another. They go to Sangomas, they go to cults because they look for a miracle. They come to us when they see a real miracle. Miracle signs on one another are for unbelievers. So an unbeliever come, but those who persecute the world are believers who do not hold on the word of God. So the world begins to hate you. How do they hate you? How is it that the world hates you? The world are the people who took Jesus. Jesus was handed over into the hand of the Jews, not the Gentiles. It's the Jews who persecuted him. The apostle Paul, it's the Jews who were after him. It's not the Gentiles. So there's a difference between... There's a difference. The world hates you. It's because people who come against without the knowledge of God. Yet they stand on the pulpit. Yet they are called Christians. I've seen the love of the world. The world seeing a miracle and say, ah, I've never seen this. And when they stand, they never talk about, let's see what they say. So they get to know Jesus. The Apostle Paul says, Oh, how I travail in pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. But because he's not formed in you, you'll do what is contrary. Me, I call them, let them come, let them play. I delight in it. So I just want to give you the reality of the Apostle Paul there. When he delighted them, he said, let them happen. I delight because I now know how to call. When I call in a state of witness, God's power is made perfect, is made complete in me. So if there's something lacking in me, I go in my weaknesses. So if it has to be perfected, I'd rather be weak. And who must be used for me to be weak? Someone must come and make me weak. Read that. Therefore, 
I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities, uh -huh. that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. Repeat. Therefore, uh -huh. I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses uh -huh. and infirmities. Uh -huh. That the strength and power so of Christ. So that the strength and the power of Christ. Do what? May rest. May rest. May pitch a tent. May pitch a tent. Over and dwell upon me. Over and dwell upon me. Let that power pitch a tent. Over and dwell in me. So that power comes, it overshadows you, it lives in you. Touch not now. So many look, are looking. Why do you look for power through laying on of hands? Look for it through witness. Share with me in my sufferings. So that the gospel you preach may expose you. And you will do it in the power of God. That's what the Apostle Paul says to Timothy. The Apostle Paul already prayed for Timothy. He already prayed for him. But he comes to him and advises him on how to get this. The second Timothy, the same second Timothy, chapter 1 verse 8. He says, Timothy, do not blush. Do not be ashamed to testify about me, even Christ. Don't be ashamed to testify about Christ, even me. So don't be ashamed when you go out here. That one who caused people to eat grass, say, yes, perfectly, I've been there. Yes, I'm from there. Don't be offended. Say, yes, I'm from there. Perfectly, I'm from there. Hey, he's so nice. Don't be offended. So don't be afraid to testify about Christ, even me. Then he says, share with me in my sufferings so that your gospel you preach will expose you. So how will you be exposed? By men? By media? But no, the gospel you preach must expose you. And after that, it says what? Then you will do it in the power of God. Meaning that's how God's power will be made perfect in you, Timothy. So there's no need for you, Timothy, to come and say, Papa, Papa. Papa, papa, please, papa, papa. There's no, 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 no. Go and share with me so that you can see the results. So that the gospel you preach will expose you and you will do it in the power of God. Every time, papa, don't bring money to me and say, papa, papa, I need him. But already you got it. Go and do what is right. So the Apostle Paul advised Timothy on how to get this surpassing greatness, God-reserved power that is complete in us. To get it, this one, my son, there's no need for me to lay a hand. There's no need for you to come and bow down before me. But this one, you have to go in the weakness. Go, testify about me. Testify about Christ. Testify so that the gospel you preach will begin to expose you and you will do it in the perfect power from above. Then when you are weak, Timothy, that's when you know how to call Father, Father, Father. Because you share in weaknesses. If you share in weaknesses, ah, they persecute you in your house, your father, your mother, your relatives. Why do you go to that man? Why? Let them make you weak in your house. Let them make you weak in your family so that you can be alone as you sleep, Father. Father, I'm weak, Father. I can, all of a sudden, the power, the power of God becomes perfect in your weakness. Libra kashutse, timbre kebrato sikara, jemble bratu zekuche, turati sika parant. Lembre ke jisho saka, le drepi frakia. So let it happen in your own house. Let them plot, let them speak against you, let them lie about you, let them do it. Say, do it, 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 do it. I am ready in your church, wherever you go to that church, when you go back, you say, I'm healed, I'm delivered. They will speak against, they will talk, they talk about simple things. 
Who opened your eyes? It's simple, the thing. It's not associated with power. Your eyes are opened. We know Moses. As for that man, we don't know he's a sinner. You don't know him, yet he opened my eyes. You're not offended, but you speak. You don't know him, yet he opened my eyes. When they kick you out, allow it. Go out. When they kick you out, allow it. Go. When they kick you out, let them kick you out. When you go out, Jesus realizing what has happened, he comes and he meets with you. Lord, who is he? He doesn't know who opened his eyes. The Lord Jesus says, I'm he. I've come to open the eyes of those who cannot see and to blind those who claim to see. So I'm here to open your eyes. Physically, your eyes were not opened. But physically, it was these eyes which opened to see people. But knowing me, you have not known me. But this is the time that you know me because you were persecuted right in your church. You went there. You were not afraid to testify about... You testified about me. You don't know him, yet he opened. So he testified. After testifying, what happened? He begins to see. Call unto me. I will show you great and mighty works. Call in your weakness. Let those elders speak against you. Let those elders plan and plot against you. Let the world be exposed among Christians. In fringe, human earthen vessel of clay, God puts his treasure. A treasure dwells in weakness. Treasure dwells in weakness. That's why we are hard pressed on every side. They saw that it's a human vessel of clay. They had pressed it on every side, but it's not destroyed. So, in which state are you when you call for this power? So, don't go and deny around, man of God, I need impartation. Man of God, pray for me, I need impartation. What state are you in, my son? So, let me tell you, go. The only thing that you can do to possess this greatness, this extreme greatness, this perfect power, go. Do not blush. The problem is you are blushing. Do not blush. Go testify about Christ, even me. Do not be ashamed. Share with me my sufferings so that what you preach will expose you. You've been preaching, but you are not exposed. The only thing that you can cause you to be exposed, do not blush. Do not be ashamed. The gospel you preach will expose you and you will do it in the power of God. God's power, God's strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Go, share with me my suffering to make you weak. At the moment you are weak, you'll call, Father. You begin to call. As you call, it will not be you who'd say, I got this by, the, by my own might and power. But you will know that it's from God. It's from God and not from you. So, many are looking for prayers, for impartations. They're looking for such. Look, you, when you go in your church, there will be manifestations which are funny. Reserved, unknown, unheard things must happen. Because it shows that it's from God and not from you. I don't come in and pray, Father, let this happen, let this happen. No, God just shows it. Are we going somewhere? So it's time. Know your God in the spirit. Know him in the spirit. It's painful. You have them talking over the phone about you. You just hear them talking, speaking about you. Some things that other people told them, they discuss about you, they believe them. If you're just human, you'll what are they saying about me? Let them talk. Let them talk. They're planning to say this. Look the wrongs that he's doing. Look what he's doing with children there. Look what he's doing with people 
in his church. Look what he's doing. Is it right what he's doing? Some are leaving their homes because of him. Yet they know nothing. Some of you, don't you know that Jesus said, if you leave your mother and father, if you leave your wife, if you leave your children, your daughter, mother, if you love them, you're not worthy to be my disciples. You're not worthy. So they say this and say whatever. They will talk about you all over the cities, all over the country, all over the world, saying whatever. But you say, Father, I allow this. Let it happen. Then God's strength is perfected in your weakness. Then you begin to do strange things, greater things, things unknown, things unheard of, things never seen before. There is the unrecorded. There is the unrecorded. The unrecorded things that you don't know, things that you never heard of, things that you never seen, so that you mustn't say, I know, for it is God who gave them. So that you mustn't say, I knew them. So God will give you what you don't know in your weakness. In your weakness. God will give you what you don't know in your weakness. Come on, you have to register on this earth and God begins to use you to do things that were never recorded on earth. Since the beginning of the world, go and write book which was never written on earth. Since before the, since before the world began. Now, since the world began, go and produce a thing which was not done. Because God reserved it for the weak. So Jeremiah 33, call unto me, I will answer, I will show you great and mighty works. In which state are you in when you call? The things people have been calling based on the chapter. On radio station, let's have a, we have a topic. The topic is call unto me. And everybody is calling the DJ. Everybody is calling the presenter. Because the presenter is the one running the show. The presenter is the one suggesting and bringing things right according to him or her. So, but if you call unto God, don't even pick up the phone, but make a call to the presenter. And when the presenter, you know, all of a sudden, the presenter, hears when, when the bag, if you hear the phone ringing in the bag, when she opens the bag, she finds a lipstick ringing. And when she calls the lipstick, answer. The ringtone says, answer. Don't be shocked that it's your lipstick. Takes the lipstick, answer, and said, I'm, 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 I'm among the people who have been calling you concerning the topic. So call unto me, I'll answer. You see, I'm calling on the unknown. I'm calling on the reserved. So call unto me. They've been calling you. I call unto God. I don't use the phone to call you. I'm not going to use the phone to call you because I'm operating in the reserved power of God. I'm operating in the reserved authority of God. So many people are not yet weak. To carry this exceeding greatness, you have to be weak in order to call. Many call when they're not weak. That's why you don't see the exceeding greatness. Instead of being weak, you look for someone. Pray for me in part. There are some levels. They won't need someone to pray for you. They will need you to be weak in order to possess those levels. So I want you to understand, the Apostle Paul didn't run around for impartation. There are many ways where he got something different from God. So call unto me. I will answer. Let, let, let's just finish. We'll finish tomorrow. Uh, just read from verse 11. I want you to get this. If you understand, you'll scream. Let's read. Now, I have been speaking like a fool. Now I've been speaking like a fool. But you, you made me. <laughs> you made me to speak like a fool. Read there. But you forced me to eat. You forced me to eat. Huh? For I ought to have been 
saved the necessity and commended by you. I was supposed to be commended by you, huh? For I have not fallen short one bit. I've not fallen short one bit. Or proved myself at all inferior to those. Or proved myself inferior to those who are. Superlative false apostles of yours. Can you repeat it? Come on. What kind of a man who can speak like this? I'm not inferior to those super apostles of yours. What kind of man who can speak like this? They tested me. They did this to me. I'm not inferior. Now get this. You'll get it. What made him not to be inferior? Repeat. Let's get it. For I have not fallen short one bit. Yes. Or proved myself at all inferior to those superlative false apostles. I did not apostles. prove myself to be inferior to those superlative false apostles. Of yours. Of yours. Even if I'm nothing. Even if I'm nothing. You see? He's got nothing. He's weak. <laughs> Even if I'm nothing. You'll get it. Uh-huh. Indeed. The signs that indicate a genuine apostle were performed among you fully and most patiently in miracles and wonders. Fully, and wait, works. wait, fully. Meaning that power made perfect. They were performed fully. With what? With get perse persevering from man. I was weak, but it was performed. I was weak, but it was poor yet rich, blind yet seeing, weak yet strong. So, meaning the power, the exceeding powers operating through the apostle. But persevering because it's, he was in a state of weakness. Do we hear it now? He was in a state. Why? He called while he was weak. Father, please, let it go. It's too much. Let this thorn come out of my flesh. It's too much. God says, no, I'm living like that. God knew that I'm making him strong. My strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. So my power. So many want this power. But what level are you in? Which level did you go to? Which level did you go to? Some of you, I don't have to pray for you, those issues that you go through. God's grace is sufficient that you may do it in the power of God. That you may do it in the power of God. Then you are truly wealthy. You are a true son when you reach that level. You are not a son who's wavering. You are not a son who goes in and out. Who just moves around. Where can I get something else again? You are a son because you share in your father's glory. You shared in your father's witness. Therefore you shared in his glory. In witness you were able to call just as he called. So if you have not yet reached the stage of calling, when your father has called, you are not yet a son. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That one doesn't have clapping hands, it doesn't have amen. Timothy, do not blush. Do not be ashamed to testify about Christ, even me. Share with me in my sufferings. So that the gospel we preach will expose you and you will do it in the power of God. Then you are a son because you shared with the father. The son does what the father is doing. The son has equality with the father. The son has equality. They wanted to persecute Jesus because he called God his own father. They wanted to persecute. And they knew that if you are a son, you have equality with the father. So there's a kind of equality which we all have to reach in order to realize that you are a true son. A true son does what the father is doing. A true son has equality with the father. A true son is in the father. The father is in him. He and the father are one. That's a true son. That's a true daughter. Women, don't undermine yourself. They say you are weak. Take advantage of your weakness. Take advantage of that weakness. Because God's strength, God's power is made perfect in weaknesses. So don't have pride to say they say we're weak. Don't you know, Tina, say, Abu Efa, we can do it. No, don't be a fool. You're not a fool. Fools give love when love is not, doesn't have to give. You give love when it's wrong. 
Show love where love deserves to be shown. Don't be a stupid. Take advantage of that weakness as a woman. Because God's strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. Don't take it as a, 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 as a minus. It's a plus. It's a plus. And that's what made you strong, perfect. Those women who respected in the past, the Elta Woodwards. Are we going somewhere? The Catherines. You get it? All those men that respected, let's see them, let them see, let us see them more than double today. Let them break you, become weak. Don't stand for yourself. Let God stand for you. Let God stand for you. Make use of that advantage. And that's the women I want to raise. Go and be weak. So that God's strength may be revealed in you as a woman. Go stand and show the glory of God. Don't waste your time. Look at yourselves, women. Check each other now. Look at each other. Hey, even women. Now, I'm thankful now they become like men. They don't want to look at themselves. Before I say I love you, you say... Look at each other, women. Let your lips become more weak. Let your eyes be like, appear to be weak. Appear to be weak. Make use of that advantage. It's an advantage. It's not a minus, but it's a plus. That's how God's strength will be made perfect in you. Are we going somewhere? So I say to you all women, I'm making use of this advantage now. Go, do not blush to testify about me. Even Christ. Are we clear? Let them try to crush you. You carry what is from your father. You are a daughter of the storm rider. Everyone touching you. Everyone touching you, they touch me. You may be hard pressed on every side, but you'll never be crushed. Do we love Jesus Christ? Say love you, Jesus. Say love you, Jesus. So now the apostle Paul says the miracles, the signs, the wonders I did were done among you with great person. They were fully performed among you. Nothing was lacking. God's strength was shown to be perfect in him. He says they were done with great perseverance. Persevering from what? He was weak. Calling unto God. And God revealing reserved glory. Reserved power. Perfect strength. Perfect power revealed. So the miracle of the signs. So he did not heal the sick, cast out demons only. There was a sign. God to show that God is with me. God, Emmanuel, God with us too. Not God alone. A sign is a token to prove that God spoke. Where there's a sign, it shows that God is with you. Where there's a sign, it shows that God is with you. Power, strength. So he persevered while he was doing this. He was weak. So you think when you begin to perform these things, you think of money. You'll become weak. So that will attract. That will attract earthly material. First, delight in the Lord. Delighting in the Lord is to share also. Is to share with his sufferings. Share in his sufferings. So many. We, we can finish this service by saying all of you go because you came for impartation of power. Oh, listen to religion now. Because you want impartation of power. We can finish this sermon here and say, say all go, go and share. So that's what you need. If you need to get this, go and share. Glory. 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 Let's share.
let us share. Do you love Jesus Christ? Man of God, I want to do some of the things that you do, but others, hey, I can't do them. The glory, the glory has incorporated everything. The glory has incorporated everything. You want to perform a Holy Communion which does miracles, but you never drink it. It's not in you, but you want to do it. It's only when it's in you, because the Holy Communion itself, it's treasure. The blood cannot work alone without the body. The body cannot work alone without the blood. Two in you. Two in you. So when you overcome the devil, you don't overcome the devil through deliverance, through healing, through prophecy. You overcome the devil by the blood and the word of his testimony. By the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. You bring healing, fine, it's a relief. But did you overcome the devil? A demon can be cast out, but the devil still be in charge. The devil can still be in charge until you go to the blood and the word of his testimony. The word of his testimony, his testament. The body and the blood. The body represents it's a testament. It's a book. And when it's open, the devil is defeated. That's why it says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb, the word of his testimony. He was not totally defeated when he was held out of heaven. He was not totally defeated. He was held here on earth. But those who are on earth, how do you overcome? So you are doing the omega because the alpha started. When you do the omega, you finish everything. The omega by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony, you finish what the omega has started. So we overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. So we carry treasure in these frail human earthen vessels. We carry treasure. So this treasure we carry, and that's how we overcome. We don't use might and power, but the word and the blood of the lamb. The ultimate is the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. The word treasure living in you. That's why now we talk about the body and blood. It's treasure. Do you know, in a testament, it's an inheritance that you receive from the book. So it's treasure inside the book. So that's why the apostle Paul says we carry death of Jesus Christ. Death is at work in us. So his death brought us life. So this is my body broken for you, dead. Eat. And this is my blood shed for you. So you carry treasure. As you drink the body and the blood, you are eating what? Treasure. At his death, the book is opened. This is your inheritance. This is what they left for you when, before they could die. These are your parents. The lawyers opened the book and they call it a will. So Jesus, the will, came on earth. The will of the Father. He went, he opened himself for everyone. Opening himself. After opening himself, we find an inheritance out of his death. Treasure. We carry treasure. Let the two blow the trumpet in you. Do you love Jesus Christ? So we need to know and understand this because many, that's why it says people perish because of lack of knowledge. You are busy in partition, in partition. When are you going to get the mystery of calling? When are you going to get the mystery of calling? So I'm sending all of you in this training, those who are watching, leaders who are watching, I'm sending you and saying, go testify. Do not blush. Do not be ashamed to testify about Christ. So in your weaknesses, God's strength shall be made perfect, shall be made complete in you. You want such power that is made perfect in you. What must you do? Go and be weak. So the state that you are in, as you call, matters. Call unto me and I will answer. 
and I will show you great and mighty weeks. What state are you in when you call? Are you weak? Are you weak? Because the moment you become weak, God's strength is made perfect. That's why he took a form of a servant. When he took a form of a servant, God exalted him. God exalted him. When God makes anything perfect in you, God saw your witness. Go and delight in that witness. Go and delight in that witness. Do we love Jesus Christ? 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 At the end of the sermon, may the grace of the Lord be upon you, but you're not weak. You see, everybody was saying this. <laughs> At the end of the service, may the grace of the Lord be upon you, but you're not weak. God said to the one who is weak, my grace is sufficient on you. What state are you in? When the word comes, may the grace of the Lord be upon you. Is there a thorn in your life? Are you weak? You are destroyed when you go. It shows that you are not weak. Those who are weak when you go, hard pressed on every side, you will never be crushed. You will never be crushed. So as a son, as a daughter, understand what is equality. Because Philippians 2 says, though he was equal with God, he did not make use of that for his own advantage. He took a form of a servant. Then God lifted him up. So in John chapter 5, they understand clearly, the scribes and Pharisees, they understand that when you are the son, you are equal with your father. So true sons are equal with the father. They must share in sufferings. And how do we see this? Second Corinthians chapter 1, the apostle Paul says, our message, our message with Timothy and Silas has always been yes to Christ. It has always been yes. Not a yes that might mean no. Not a yes that might mean later. You say yes, later it's no. So now you can see equality. Paul, Silas, Timothy, equality. They are true sons. Equality. Chapter 1, second verse, you see equality. That's why the apostle Paul said to Timothy, do not, listen, listen. Don't forget to fan to flame the gift which you have received by laying on my eyes. I've already laid your hands. You, what you need to do, flame it. To get equality with me, flame it. And how do you frame it? Keep the word of God. Do what is right. You can't look for a flame that is up there when you have not done what you're supposed to do. You look for impartation for a flame that is there. What did you do? Did you fan? Fan it to flame. So many, without knowledge, they run. Man of God, impartation. Now, I'm not going to be a fool before you. When you come and say this, I'm not going to be a fool. I'll advise you. For you to get this level, this is what you have to do. Go and be weak. The problem is you are blushing. Stop blushing. Stop blushing. Understand. At work, stop blushing. Don't be afraid that they will kick you out. Let them plot so that you can see that the power of God. Is, ah. Do you want to see the exceeding greatness of this power? Go. Testify and let them plot. Go back to your church. Don't come here. Cameras are moving around. When cameras come to stores, you, you are hiding. <laughs> Testify while you are here. Smile to the camera. <laughs> Smile to it. So that they can see you. When you go, there's no need for you to say, I'm from him. There's no need. You already testified. It speaks on your behalf. It helps you. (laughs) 
Let it help you. When you go say, yes, we saw you. <laughs> it's true. And it's also so nice. So nice. So nice. Hey, I still hear the voice. I still hear those, the message. I still, it's all nice. Hey, fulfillment. 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 You become weak at work. You begin to call, Father, what's happening? Didn't I tell you, my daughter, there's no institution which was made upon from me. This is my institution. I rule here. I place every authority. So any authority, if they've forgotten that they have authority above them, I'm the authority. I can remove I remove or even place. May such spirit that comes from the Lord, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of exceeding great power, may it come upon you right now. May you reach that level without choice. May you get that level without what? Without what? Without choice. Because some of the things you can't, if you can realize, if you serve God and you went through persecution, you can make your life beautiful if you want to. But what stops you from making it beautiful? God doesn't want you to make it beautiful by your own strength. He wants to make it for you. He wants to make it for you. So the apostle Paul says, the miracles, the signs, the wonders... I did among you was with great perseverance. Persevering from what? He was going through troubles. He was weak. But that weakness caused a lot of power to be shown. That's why now in the Old Testament, what would they use to anoint people? They would take oil, olive oil, and they would put spices and anoint people. David. in everybody. So before you see that oil, what do you see? Olive. They go to the olive tree, they took out olives. And they crush olive. And when they crush it, what does it produce? Oil. It's painful. But what does it produce? Oil. We are hard pressed on every side. But what do we see? It produces what? The miracles, the signs on us I did among you with great perseverance crushed. And what is happening? God brings out that exceeding great power because there's treasure in you. So call unto me and I will show you great and mighty works. Things unknown. Things never seen before. Things unrecorded. Things reserved. So there are things which are reserved for all of you to perform. We don't know. We don't know what Nathaniel did. There's no book of Nathaniel. There's no book of Andrew. There's no book of Bartholomew. Moreover, there are many miracles signs on that Jesus did in the sight of the disciple which were not recorded in this book. It says if we can write books, the world is a small storage to carry everything that Jesus did. Who's going to do those things? Because they are also reserved. Who's going to do them? Remember when they accused Jesus and they said he makes himself equal to God. When they want to grip him, he escaped their grip. When are we going to see people trying to grip you and their hands just go through you? Voo. They try to clip you. Voo. You just go through them. Voo. They can't touch you. When are we going to such, see such things? Because it says he escaped their grip. I mean, so many people, they must grip you. Jesus was alone. If everybody we stand, we grip you. You see how big you are. You may trust in your strength. But everybody, can you overcome us? Can you? No. But Jesus alone, everybody, he just went through them. It says he escaped their grip. Somewhere they wanted to throw him over the cliff. If he's alone, everybody, is it not possible? But he, the Bible says he just went through them. The country, he just went through them. When are we going to see those things? Sons and daughters, there are many things that are reserved. And that's why now I'm teaching this. 
understand why sons and daughters were produced here. What the father goes through, you must go through it. Share. <laughs> Share. To prove that this power is not from us, but it's from God. That's what the apostle is saying. Yeah. To show that the power is not from us, but it's from God. Just to show that it's not from us, it's from God. So we begin to understand all of us today. I believe God gave us insight today. Because many just go for impartation. What kind of a thing are you? That's why many get attachments because you are looking for anything anyway. Go and be weak. And God's strength is made perfect in you. Anybody can touch you, no attachment. Because yours is more. That's why I'm saying, that's why he says, I'm not less inferior to those who are super apostles. He says, I'm not inferior to them. Those super apostles of yours. That's what he's saying. Because some, for you not to get attachment, this is also the answer to you. Because if you carry the exceeding greatness in you, nothing can destroy that flesh. No attachment. Even though they lay hands, you begin to realize, ah, but yeah. I, I, what, what was I doing here, man? I, lay your hand I remember somewhere they wanted to cast out this power. <laughs> What's happening? Let me humble myself. That's what I did. And they don't show that video. Yeah, that's what I did. Those who watched, that's what I did. I just humbled myself. They did whatever. My body was painful after that. <laughs> yeah. They took me to this one, this one, that one. They know. That's what I did. Don't worry. My book is going to reveal everything. I'm going to write everything. I'm going to write everything. Those who were watching that day, they saw. They took me from this one, from this, because the boss didn't make it now. That maybe the disciples will do it. This line, after the pass, they take me, they took me to that so that he can, when he comes, he can pray. Nothing happens. They take me to that line. I said, but what's happening? People looking and say, but what are they doing to him? People are saying, what? When I finish, my body painful. The whole world watching. My body so painful when I finish. That's why I'm saying, don't worry, in my book, I'm going to give you, you will know everything. <laughs> body painful. And just being there alone thinking, was I called here for the glory or what is this? But now begin to realize, when God gives you that humility, let them do whatever. To show that this exceeding greatness in you, it's not from you, it is from God. And God does not cast God out. Amen. That's why today we speak freely. Because it gives us more trust on this power that God gave. We speak without doubt. We don't use triggery. If some use triggery, we don't use triggery. We don't adulterate the word of God. So you just painful, you relax there and say, what can happen? When you come, you see things happening even the more. People asking, why is he continuing? He didn't know, wasn't he delivered? <laughs> After that, more things, petrols, everything. Now what do you see today behind me? Listen, your life is a story that people have to read about. So whatever happens in your life, accept it. Whatever causes you to be weak, accept it. So that this exceeding power, exceeding greatness of God might be made manifest in your weaknesses. That's how we call unto God. And you're calling, say, God, why? Why is this happening? What's happening, God? Lord, what's happening? And yet, he's preparing his strength for you. Reserved power, reserved glory coming upon you. Here we are today. The word that overcomes, speak, and it come to pass. But if it does not pass, come to pass, the word that, come, that came out of my mouth is questionable. 
it becomes questionable. Because we are here, all of us, not for ourselves, but for God to be made known. For God to be made known. So God is here, all of us here, sitting together. He knows what you have to get today. But the paramount thing that I'm giving you, go. Don't blush. Don't be ashamed to get this exceeding greatness. To receive this exceeding greatness, don't blush. Do not be ashamed. Go testify about Christ, even me. Let me help you. It's a good platform to get this. Go talk about Christ. Don't exclude me. Are we clear? Because many of us here, we are men and women of God. We are leaders here. We are leaders here. But don't become a weak leader in terms of not knowing how to get the exceeding greatness. Become a wise leader knowing how to be weak. Are we clear? Knowing how to be weak. Become a great leader who knows how to be weak. And the moment I knew how to be weak, I realized, but why after anything bad happens to me, when I go on the pulpit, more is happening. Why? I begin to question that. Then God began to teach me, it's good what they do to you. This is the world. That's how the world operates. That's how the world operates. It's a good thing to go through persecutions. So go and do it with great perseverance. Go and don't just become a hard worker. Do it in the presence of God. In the presence of God, you are not alone, but the master is with you. The master is with you, is with, with you. So I'm going to minister to you quickly. Just believe. This is the day that the Lord has made for all of you. You must rejoice and be glad in it. Are we clear? So let this help all of us as leaders. As leaders, let's understand now. There are things that you'd receive through praying or laying on of hands. But some, you won't get them until this step that we speak about today is performed in your life. Calling when you are weak. Call unto me. So everybody just calls. You read Jeremiah 3, it says call. Let's come, let's call. No, it depends on the state that you're in. When you are in a weak state calling, things unknown, things unheard, great and mighty works will be revealed in your life because you called when you are weak. Because people say, I want to see myself doing such greater things and did you call when you are in the right state? Did you call when you were in the right state? That's why now, Galatians 6 will continue the next session. They want you to be circumcised because they want their mark on you. Why do they do that? They are afraid of persecution. If I have your mark, I won't come against you. If, I, if you have my mark, you won't fight me. So now beware what you do to me. I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. So let us be here to give each other the marks of Jesus Christ. Not to teach what may later show that we are disqualified. So let us carry the marks of our Lord 
Jesus Christ. So I'm going to minister to you. And when I minister to you, I embrace the marks on you. So, as I embrace the marks, when you go, when they begin to look at you funny, know that it started. Go and be weak. Do not blush. Testify. Speak. So that the exceeding greatness of God may now rest in you. To God be the glory. My lions, to God be the glory. Lions, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Slip on the ground. Wake up on your feet. Wake up. Back to your seat. From Zimbabwe, from Namibia, from... Eh, it's not South Africans. It's the kingdom of God. Do we love Jesus Christ? Do we love Jesus Christ? So, let us all understand this and carry it with our hearts. Let us go and see such manifestations. Are we clear? Are we clear? Do we love our Father? Let's go and notice this and enjoy it. Are we clear? Do we love our Father? Do we love our Father? Do we love our Lord? Do we love our Lord? During the week, when those other women came because they have issues with their husbands, some would look at me funny and say, and I said, hey, what are you saying? Go and bath. Go to Merlin. Go to the best boutique and dress. Go. Look at yourself. Go buy nice... You come, you cry because of your husband. Go. When you enter the door on Sunday, if you come out and you look funny, you must go away. Go to the best mall and look for what is best. Go. Don't come here and cry about your husband. saying go and do it now the more now the more they do what is against you now no look the more persecution the more beauty yeah. don't go and open your mouth and do whatever go and look nice get the best when it's painful the last night, wake up in the morning and look at your mirror and do whatever. And measurement, do it right. Measure right and fire right and fa fa foo. Fire and boom. Because when you begin to call unto the Lord, Father, and God says, hmm. That's what I'm doing. Whatever that happens to me, you'll never see me coming on the pulpit saying, Ish, they started again. Ish. I won't invite anybody because I can't. So whatever you're going through, rejoice. You understand now, no? Re, do what? Rejoice. Delight in those things. So I'm just teaching you from a family. Some would say, but this man, why? Why is he like this? Why is he doing opposite? Kill the Me? I never cry with you. I would say, hey. Nadi bata go. Tamo chapa. The other one, somebody called me. Say, man of God, this is too much. Now I'm going to kill myself. I'm just wanting to say bye bye. I said, go. Let me give an idea on how to do it better. <laughs> Let me give an idea on how to do it. Go. You want to kill yourself? You want to do whatever? Didn't I teach you? Did I do what? I told you everything. So you tell me you are going. How can you say bye bye to me? Go. Go and kill yourself. It means you don't love me. I'm coming on Sunday. We'll sit down one on one. I said, come. Let's speak. Come on Sunday. We'll speak. When you come, when you sit down, what were you trying to do? Man of God, you don't know. It was. <laughs> do we love Jesus Christ? 
Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you love Jesus Christ? Have you ever seen someone look at people and takes a group of petrol and says, you know, I'm going to die now. I don't care. People are looking at him. I'm going to kill myself. They're looking. People are looking. He takes a box of match. He. It means you don't love me. <laughs> now go in bath. Remove petrol. Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you love our Father? So I love with Jesus. So I love my Father. So God is here to bless us. What I'm saying is, I'm not, it's not a joke. It's part of spiritual stuff that I'm teaching you. Delight in what you're going through. Delight in those pressures. Though we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not destroyed. We are not crushed. Are we clear? We are not, we are not crushed. So delight in them so that God's strength can be made perfect in you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Do you love Jesus Christ? So let's go for it. So what I'm doing now, when I minister to you, I'm just embracing, let me know, I'm embracing what's going to happen in your life after this. When you go out, don't blush. Do not be ashamed. If you want to see God being at work in you, go and do what I tell you. Because many people are afraid of persecution. Are we away? I mean, no one likes persecution. But if God takes you there without choice, welcome it. Just welcome it. It will be nice. Are we clear? It will be? It will be nice. So I love you, Jesus. So I'm blessed above all. So I'm blessed above all. So... I prophesy people here who are going to write books which were never written on earth. People who are going to perform things that were never performed on earth. People who are going to do from above. And if in your head there's a demon that disturbs that, I remove it now as I'm going to minister to you. I remove it now. As I minister to you, I'm doing away with it. Do you love Jesus Christ? Any demon that prevents greater things to happen, any demon that says you will not experience this, I remove it. I would say. So the only one that I allow in you is what God has permitted to be in you. A messenger of Satan sent out to harass and buffet you. So when he's sent out to buffet you, what's happening? God says, my grace is sufficient. So there's the one that we are going to leave as a minister to you. Amen. <laughs> we are going to leave it in you. So that he can harass and buffet you. You'll call, you'll call, remove it. God says, my grace is sufficient. As you call in your weakness, all of a sudden you find yourself performing strange things. Then when we say, now you are truly wealthy. Are we clear? So what I'm doing right now, ministering to you, I'm just embracing that. I'm just embracing it. So you who go to work, you never spoke about your father. You never said, ah, he's my father. You never said anything. Look, I'm going to speak on your behalf. All of a sudden, there will be a voice coming next to you says, she's the daughter. <laughs> she's the daughter. So go and testify. I'm not ashamed of, you can see what I do. I'm not ashamed of what I'm doing. I'm not ashamed. I thank God for doing this. This is going to teach nations even further. All things are possible. To God be the glory.
12th. The elections are on the 12th. I'm contesting for SRC president. Yeah, God is with you. Yeah? God is with you.
What's that? Pancreatitis. The word of the Lord locates your son, giving him life right now. It's happening right now. It's painful, no? The word of the Lord locates him, raising him up for him in glory. As the centurion spoke, just said, well, my son will healed. It's done in Jesus' name. Take this given to me. But call him now, check the pain, and come back. I no pain anymore. You're free. God is with you. Let's live for Jesus. She had a pain on her leg, and after our father ministered life upon her, now she says the pain is gone, is completely gone. She's now healed.
disciplinary hearing. I'm going for disciplinary hearing. Yes. And you go. Huh? And after nothing. Yeah, don't worry. Just go. This. Just go and announce yourself. Ne? Okay. When you go there, announce yourself. That's it. God is with you. You'll bring your testimony. Ne? Daddy, we have just made a call with Mama here. The brother is saying now he's fine. The abdominal, abdominal pains are gone. The pain is gone. For the how pain long? is gone. For how long? He has had pain for several months and had two operations and is due for the third one. So he was due for the third operation? He's due for the third operation on the 11th. So he op was operated twice? He was operated twice. He's due for the third operation. And now when you call, what is he saying? He says he's fine. The abdominal pain couldn't make him sleep. He was circulating Everything all is around gone. to the back. He says all the pain is gone. All the pain is gone. All the pain is gone. Go and see your son and celebrate with your son. Thank you, Jesus. God is with you, yeah? It's sinuses. No? How are you feeling? I feel okay. Huh? I feel okay. Okay, now, bless you. <laughs> no? Shoes. No? A mother suffering from sinuses. Sinuses. No, you're fine. Let's clap for Jesus. Now she's fine. She can breathe well after her father prayed for her. Yeah, how's it been now? How's it been now?
I declare you blessed. God is with you. Okay, let's come to one confession. Let's hear this confession. God is with you all. Those who are watching by the telecast, the Lord is blessing you. The Lord is set you free. I'm just saying a simple prayer. The word of the Lord has come under the roof, raising you up, giving you life from above. I declare you blessed right now. The centurion just spoke one thing. I know what it means to have authority. Now I'm under your authority. Just say the word in my soul and be healed. I'm just saying the word. The word of the Lord has come, setting you free, giving you life from above. I declare you blessed as watching. Do send your testimonies. The word of the Lord has come, removing every diabolic spirit in your life. Every evil spirit, such things as limitations are no more when the word of the Lord has come. When the word of the Lord has come, such things as limitations are no more. No poverty, nothing. The word of the Lord has come to set you free in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every sickness, every disease, the word of the Lord has come to remove that. I say right now, your body is prospered just as if in your soul is prospered. You are prospered in every way in Jesus' name. Right now, let us hear confessions and that's it. I declare blessed. Send your testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Evening, Papa. My name is Justina Kaba. I'm coming from Kwam Shanga. My confessions that year, protecting the anointing. There was years ago while I was watching TV, there was the one apostle who was delivering one of Papa's family member. Then he said, Papa, he's a true man of God, but he's only misusing his power. So the mistake that I did, when people were talking about Papa, I was saying, Papa, he's a real man of God, he's just misusing the power. I didn't understand that is the Holy Spirit at work. I asked Papa for the forgiveness there. The other, the other time, protecting the anointing, there was a man of God somewhere where the church fell, then I was protecting him, and I pray that God forgive me. Other offense, I was not aware that I was offended. This is under offense. Early January, I tell him, I told my family that I'm going to start the ministry. Then my sister said to me, if you go and start the ministry, don't kill me so that your ministry must grow. I wasn't aware that I was offended. And this offense caused me to have anger in the family. The other, other thing, offense under my marriage. One day I was watching Papa teaching about covenants. Me and my husband in the year 2000, before we get married, my grandmother, who is a Sangoma, did a blood covenant. He cuts me and my husband, then we mix blood. And then this affected my marriage. There's no peace in my marriage. And then the other consequences that happen under these con confessions. I have pains in my bones, inside my marrows, especially at night. The other thing, money is just missing, especially if it's me who's putting the money aside, I'll find some other money missing. The other thing, I have a lot of fear and anger. This year, after I started the ministry, we killed several snakes in the house. Since then, I will just think of snakes. If I can see anything under the carpet or the sofa, I'll go and check if it's not the snake. So most of the time, I'll be busy thinking about the snake. My confession ends there. I ask Papa and the Holy Spirit to forgive me. Amen. To God be the glory. God loves you, Mamani. God is with you. I forgive you. The Spirit of Christ forgives you. You're forgiven in Jesus' name. God is with you. You're forgiven. God is with you. My name is Gerrit Gutubeka. I'm from Botswana. Um, I came here to confess uh, about disobedience. Um, last year, Papa came into my dreams and he told me not to move in with the father to my kids. Um, because before that, I had moved to my mom's house, though my mom is late. Um, due the, to the situation that I was going through with my daughter who wasn't well. So when I got there, um, my relatives, everyone was against me that uh, I come here. So I, I end up moving away 
and then I went to to stay with the father to my kids. So what happened is this other time when I was watching um, the service li um, live service, he came, then he found me when I was watching it. He had to fight with me. He hit me on my, uh, on my head. So this, it affected me a lot because offense, I got offended a lot to an extent that my left side, I have a problem with my head and my heart. There's something like, I don't know whether it's a cloth in my heart or I haven't been to the hospital though, but there's a, my left side, there's too much of numbness. So it affected me in a way that even my prayer line got down. Um, up to now, I just tried, I was thinking I was doing the right thing for the sake of my kids, but it had really killed me spiritually. Thank you. I forgive you, the spirit of Christ forgives you. Spirit behind this. Evil giant in the family, evil giant demon in the house. Giant demon of the house. Finish. You're forgiven, eh? God is with you. Let's live for Jesus. Okay. Start. Kibidua Francina Malebang, Kizwa Kobotswana. My name is Francina Malebana. I'm from Botswana. Nagitlovo confess aga disobedience, law offense. I came to confess regarding disobedience and offense. Um, I came to confess 
in my beginning of being of being born again i took offense ka gore ke ne ka dira ke gore ke ne ka togela duo tse di gore ke ne ke ne ke rana business ya bujalwa ka bo ke ke khuita e le gore ke tsole ke be ke be ke togela business ya teng ke di bile gore ga se ga ke a tshwana go rana business ya bujalwa I got offended because I had a business of selling alcohol therefore I had to stop um selling that or I had to close that business therefore I took offense from that Kine ga tsa offense ka mabaka gore ha ke sna ona ke tswala business batho bothe ba nele gore ke ne ke ba thusa ka ke ba thusa ka madi a teng a business ba ile ba hela ba tswa mo go nna mo botsolong jaane I got offended because the money that I was the money that I got from that business of selling alcohol I used to help um other some other people therefore those people they then withdrawn from me because I could not help them anymore Ke ne ke thusa ko re ke ne ke thusa batho botela le le bathanga ba modimo ka bontsi ke ne ke ke gona go ba thusa I was financing a lot of people especially men of God I was helping them me janong go mora go be go lebega ile gore ba mblemela gore ke eng ha ke ha ke tswetse business a bujana they were also blaming me for closing my business of selling alcohol ha se ka ga thola go nna lo pe yo yo tang go nna kana ta go nkgothatsa gore ke di lesson te mongwe le ngoke ona re ha ke a dira sentle gore ke be ke tswetse business a bujana there is not even one of them who came to encourage me or congratulate me of the deci- decision that i had made but the, all of them all they were say all they were saying was that i did i made a wrong i took a wrong decision by closing down that business ke le se ke nna le offense le tona ke a khamala gore ke eng ha ba tanga ba modimo ba ka makala ha ke tlogela so se le gore modimo ga se ba te I then uh, took a lot of offense from that. I was like I was surprised as to why would one why would men of God be surprised when I closed a business of selling alcohol while they were supposed to rejoice. Ka gore ba ngwane ba mpotsa gore a modimo o ile le nna gore ke tswa le business ene. They asked me if God really had spoken to me that I should close down that business. Bosolo ja me ba busi mo la go thaka thakana ka hella ikile kgolegelong ka gore ne ka saka gona go duela dikoloto jaano sente My started my life started becoming miserable I even ended up uh, being arrested because I could not pay my debts anymore Ke ne ka kgolegelong ka ba ka boela ga pe ka taka kgolegelong go sna o pe yo yo tanga go nna gore gore ngwa rapele le nna kana I went to jail twice and there is no one who ever came to me to help me pray or to help me pray regarding the the issue that I was going through. Ke le tsere ke tswa mo kholegolong ke be ke nna mo lapeng ke le nosi ke se mo la go rapela ke le nosi. I I went out of jail and got went back home and started praying alone. Me ka hella ke gona gore ke te ka kwano ke te ke te ke te raboni and i and i eventually managed to come to raboni center ministries me ha ke sna ona ke ta ka kwano mothanga modimo o na ka mmolela se mo sane after in my arrival to raboni center ministries i then spoke to the man of god and told him all my problems me ga mo a nela to tswa nthari ke go simolla go minister go ne go di prisons he then gave me the treasures of darkness anointing oil that i should go and minister it into my businesses ke hele tse ke palwa ke go go minister go di prisons ka mabaka le tshogo ke ne ka nna le fiens i failed to minister the anointing oil into my businesses because i had too much fear prisons go kholegelong go kholegelong is pardon me he said that uh, i'm i failed to minister the anointing oil while in jail because i had too much fear 
me ka hela ke ikopanya le bango ba ba rapelang ile ile ba stopa sengwe se se rapelang ke le sikin ke a go pray meet ni go bangwe to pray with other people I ended up uh, going to prayer meetings to pray with other saints. I was the tallest person. I was the tallest person. I was was that I was taller than everyone else who was in there. I was I was the tallest person. These people were very young to me. They were very small. So these things, these they were calling me names. When I, 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 I went to a, to, to a group of people, a group of saints, I, to pray with them. So when I was there, I found myself the tallest person. When I look at these people, they were very small to, they were very small to me. So I started to be afraid again, thinking that because they were calling me Satanist, I was thinking that that thing is manifesting because I was from prison. So I thought it's, it's an attachment from prison. Hey, so that's why I just leave these people because I was scared to be called names. Huh? That is the, the disobedience that I did. So, man of God, Therefore, I would like to ask the man of God to forgive me. I asked for forgiveness from the men of God for my disobedience because I believe that I had to proceed in the things that I was supposed to do. To God be the glory. I forgive you. The Spirit of Christ forgives you. You're forgiven in Jesus' name. God is with you, Mamani. God is with you. You'll be in your testimony. I am Apostle Blazer and Siami Sang. I come from Francistown, Botswana. My confession is about offense. Um, before I came, my son to this ministry, there is one servant of God I know who, who just happened to talk to me about uh, the servant of God, our Father. What he was saying was that, why does your friend use a spray, anointed spray, when he is so much anointed? I said to him, I don't discuss uh, servants of God. But after I became a son, this thing stays in my heart. Uh, it never leaves me. And I, I have a feeling that uh, it's like I'm defending the anointing, which is really not uh, something that I should uh, do. So I'm just feeling that the ministry that I am leading, there is so much stagnation, so much scattering, and so much stagnation. And I sincerely believe that uh, this offense thing has a contribution to it. And I'm asking Papa to forgive me for defending the anointing inside my heart without even speaking out. That's all. I forgive you, the Spirit of Christ forgives you. You're forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed God is with you. You'll bring your testimony. God is with you. <laughs> Blessed you are there we are. We thank God for blessing us. We thank God for raising leaders and giving us the message. Blessed is the man who lives by the message that proceeds from the mouth of God. We are now blessed with life in abundance. And I'm saying right now, whoever is watching, whenever these trainings are going on, 
we are together. The same power that comes upon everyone in this auditorium comes upon you right now. I declare you blessed, healed, delivered, and made whole. And made whole. Do not blush. Do not be ashamed to testify about me, even Christ. Share with me my sufferings so that the gospel you preach may expose you and you will do it in the power of God. Meaning that perfect power that rests in you, that complete power that rests in you. You don't need anything else, but you need to delight in your weaknesses. Let weakness come and you'll be able to call unto the Lord. As you call unto him, he shows you this great and exceeding power that surpasses all. God is here to bless you. I say now receive this. Go on. Don't blush. Do not be ashamed. Testify. God is with you. I declare you blessed. We thank God for this training, this past two sessions. We thank God that he revealed his greatness. He revealed his mystery. Let us continue to be together. Keep praying for me so that God can open a door into this ministry. I commit you so that I can do better. As you commit me, I commit you. Let God open this curtain. Let us be able to see the glory in us. The mysteries are declared amongst the matured. Thank you for tuning in. Let us meet again the next session Sunday. Let's meet. The Lord is here to bless you. I'll be giving anointing all to everyone. And I thank God that he has already given more messages from above to set his people free, to cause us to understand the mysteries from above. Remember God's intentions for all of us to be developed and reach nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. Once we reach there, no one can speak against each other. Love operates there. Let us go on with love, for love gives us life. Thank you for tuning in. Let's meet the next session. Be blessed and enjoy those dreams, enjoy those visions, enjoy the voice of the Lord coming to you. I declare blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you.